This electric clock is almost 100 years old, but it still works. It was built by the Hammond Clock Company in the 1920s. Unfortunately, at the end of the 1920s, the stock market crashed and the Great Depression began, and the market for high-end electric clocks like this collapsed. Lawrence Hammond, the president of the company, searched for another product to make using synchronous motors and tiny gears that he had used to build these clocks. He decided to try to make an organ that could be bought by churches that could not afford pipe organs. Inside the organ, there are a number of small wheels, two of which are shown here. You can see that one of them has a scalloped edge and the other one has an edge with finer teeth. Each wheel is positioned next to an electromagnet, which is held in a fixed location, extremely close to the edge of a wheel. The electromagnet works the same way as an electric guitar pickup, except instead of facing a guitar string which vibrates, the teeth of the wheel rotating past the tip of the electromagnet cause a tiny current to occur in the coil of wire. For the large scalloped wheel, this produces a low note at the same rotational speed as a high note would be produced by the wheel with very tiny teeth. There are 91 of these wheels inside the organ mounted on shafts. Each one pair of them is rotated by a gear which is mounted in between them. On the ends are two bearings. The signal from these electromagnets is passed through a vacuum tube amplifier as it's selected by the keys on the keyboard and the draw bars that give the proportion of the sounds from various tone wheels to create harmonics. In this way, Hammond devised a way to make it possible so that any key could be pressed and produce a sound and any number of keys could be pressed at a, a given time and all the sounds would be produced in unison. Recently, a friend of mine who owns a Hammond A100 model built in the 1960s had to have her organ serviced by a local organ service professional. He explained that every year one must oil the various oil cups inside the organ in order to make sure that all the little wheels and bearings can turn freely. Only use Hammond oil. If you buy it in a bottle with a little eyedropper like I sell, it makes it very easy. You put one eyedropper full in that cup and then two eyedropper fulls in the funnels. There's one funnel here. Oh, for all the, yeah. And there's one funnel back down under here that looks identical. So one eyedropper in each funnel? Or two in each? Two in each. Two in each, okay. okay. That's, so now I'll go back so you're and- you're letting it kind of go through. Yep. Now that's what you would do once a year, but because you haven't done it in a few years, I'm gonna put in some extra. So it doesn't hurt to have a little more. This one, it does hurt to have a little more, um, but I'm going to put a little extra in that one. And that's the motor. Yep, and the scanner. Right. So it'll be every holiday season, this gets oiled. Yep. If I recall, the reason I, the organ didn't work when you first called me was because it hadn't been oiled in a long time. It hadn't been oiled in a long time. I had to raise this up and get under there. You had to oil all the little ones. Probably separately. hadn't been oiled in 50, 40 years. Well, if, if you if you let it go too long without oiling it once a year, yeah. that problem is going to happen again. So that's okay, why. Okay, well, I won't. I'm sure I told you that last it. time, too. You probably did. Yeah, yeah. Well, but but we, didn't, we didn't get the details like we're doing right now. Yeah. That's how you oil it. So. Uh, okay, so this is how it works. Turn it on. The start switch is spring-loaded. It pops back, right? Yeah. So you hold it up, and this, I should spray a little cleaner in there, which I will. But you hold it up. And you wait. And you wait, you hear it spin up. You count to what? It doesn't matter. You yeah, hear it spin well, up. I mean, that's this is long enough. Uh, five seconds is usually fine. And while still holding this, you hit the run switch. Hold for two more seconds, then let go. Now the organ is running. 
When the organ is cold, you won't have any sound until the tubes warm up, which takes 20 seconds or so, but this was just running so the tubes are already warm. Now, to get sound out of the organ, you have to have a preset down. The preset are the reverse color keys, and they stick down. So these keys are for the upper manual, these are for the lower manual. As long as you have a preset down, you get sound. These are all different sounds. They all sound different, except this last one, which is a cancel key. And the reason for the cancel key is if you accidentally get multiple down, you don't want that, you can cancel them out. Now the last two, the B flat and the B, or what select your draw bars. B flat selects the draw bar bank on the left, B selects the draw bar bank on the right. These two draw bar banks are for the upper manual, these two draw bar banks are for the lower manual. So again, B flat for the upper manual puts you on this set, and as you pull these out you get different sounds. This selects this set. Lower manual, B flat, is the one on the left, so you're on this set, and B is this set. And the reason you have different sets is you can set up two different sounds if you like. Say you like this sound and you like that sound. Well, instead of having to move the draw bars, you can just select between those two sounds by switching your presets. Now those two manuals actually have a name, great and swell, which is which? Swell is the upper, great is the lower. Okay. And they correlate to these vibrato switches. Which aren't working. No, they just sound bad. But yes, they're not working correctly. Oh, it's At this moment it is, but it's going to come back. I'm sure the problem will come back. These two in the middle are for your bass pedals. Low no octave, higher octave. There's no keys for them, they always work. Right? Correct, as long as the draw bars are open. Yeah. Uh, and then the percussion is over there. The percussion is yeah. these four switches. It only works on the upper manual and only if you're on the B preset. So oh. if you're not on the B preset, these do nothing. Okay. What percussion does is it gives you a sound that decays like a piano. Slow decay is, I mean, fast decay is about one second. Slow decay is about three, four seconds. Uh, and you can pick a harmonic, third harmonic or second harmonic and quiet or louder. And that uses up one of the draw bars to do it? Right, exactly. This top draw bar will not work when percussion is on. You turn percussion off, this draw bar does work. Oh, okay. So if you turn it on, if you turn the percussion on, then you can use the other draw bars to add sound right. in addition to it. Right. That's your standard jazz organ Jimmy Smith sound. First three draw bars out, percussion tabs all forward. So you get some attack kind of on, yep. on the note. That's right. Uh, this switch just makes everything quieter if you want to play quieter. This adds reverb. I actually have the reverb disconnected at the moment, but this gives you an echo sound when you turn it up. Um, all your volume is done with your foot down here, which is disconnected at the moment, but it'll all be connected when I'm done. Yep. Uh, and in terms of how the draw bars work, let's select the first draw bar, upper manual. I mean, first draw bar bank, which is the B flat. Yeah. If you actually want to hear the notes you play, let's say I pick middle C. You don't get anything until you pull out a draw bar somewhere. Right, but if you actually want to hear middle C, you pull out the first white draw bar. Now, if, you, if I pull out the first draw bar, it's dust. That's an octave lower. So even though I'm playing this note, you're hearing that note. This is a fifth above. So even though I'm playing this C, you're hearing that G. Again, this is the fundamental. All the whites are octaves, so that's an octave up, you're hearing that C. That's an octave and a fifth, you're hearing that G. Two octaves, you're hearing this C. Two octaves and a third, you're hearing that E. Two octaves and a fifth, you're hearing that G. And three octaves, you're hearing that. Now you play this one note, you pull all the draw bars out, you hear all of those notes. High C, high G, high E, C, G, C, C, G, C. 
So there's an entire C major chord, even though I'm only playing one note. And then if you play an entire C major chord, it's it big. huge <laughs> because you have all those notes in there. Right. That's the basics. I didn't realize that this this is an octave down. Yep, that's why they're brown. The browner subs. But this one is, is above right. the C it's that you were playing. These these aren't actually in the harmonic series. Okay. That's that's an octave below, and that's a fifth above. The harmonic series actually starts here with the whites. And so this one is backwards from this. In other words, that's a higher note than that. That's is. correct. But these all go in order in terms of the the more you This is the, the further harmonic series. So fundamental, first harmonic, second harmonic, third harmonic, fourth harmonic, fifth harmonic, sixth harmonic. Oh, got it. Okay. Excellent. I think we're set.